uh, existing operational systems okay where operational systems are more concentrated to run the business where business users are looking to improve the business okay so there was a gap in between these two systems okay, so data warehousing concept has came into picture in early 90s okay, in 1990s and uh, <coughs> bill inman who was called as, who is being called as father of data warehousing he has given a pretty uh, good definition get okay, to define what is data warehouse and what the business users would want to analyze their data and to take a proper decision for the business growth okay, so that is subject oriented integrated time varying and non volatile data which can be used for decision making for the business growth okay, so that is called a data warehouse okay, so we have seen each and every term and we have did all the background work to understand this data warehouse right so any questions till yesterday in warehouse concepts anyone okay so okay so we will go ahead and we will see the rest of the topic data warehousing concepts <coughs> okay and here it is a pictorial representation how an operational database would look like and how a data warehouse okay, would be designed. Okay, in the operational database, all applications are okay on the functionality based. Okay, so let's, let's suppose if I consider a bank again. Okay, in bank we have several products. We have loan products, loan products in the sense credit cards. Okay, um, we have um, personal loans, mortgage loans, vehicle loans, automobile loans. Okay, all these loans could come under loans. Okay, credit card is is also a type of loan but if the customers are more for, for this particular product okay, that will be segregated as a new application itself so that it can be manipulated and it can be accessed very easily by the customers okay so they have segregated as per the applications okay this loan is an application okay credit card is an application savings okay whoever opens saving accounts in my bank okay all those customers should be handled through the savings application Okay, so like this, the customer relationship, trust, okay, all these applications will be segregated as per the functionality. Okay, so whenever I go to this loans application operator, and if I ask, okay, can I get the number of customers of the savings account? Can he able to get it for me? Okay, because he maintains only the loan related details. Okay, he cannot have any details regarding any other applications. Right, so it is isolated. It doesn't contain anything else except okay, the loans related details. In okay, the same way, if I go to savings account uh, application operator and if I ask, okay, who all are taken loans? Okay, who has already opened a savings account? Because okay, so I am asking a question related to savings account, okay, but it is related to some other applications where he has to refer other application data also to answer my question right what what the question was I asked okay who all are the customers who has opened a saving account and has taken a loan also okay, so I am integrating these two applications the question is integrating these two applications but there is no answer from any one of these okay but <coughs> because the loans application okay, doesn't have any information about the savings operation you did okay and the savings application won't have any details about the loan account okay so <clears throat> if you ask any question related to loan he can answer immediately because it is an optimized application which can handle only loans details okay so he can answer it very well within seconds okay if i if i'm a loan customer if i go there if i ask what is my <clears throat> outstanding balance okay what is my interest rate he will be able to answer it very quickly because he won't, he maintains only the data. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. So if I ask any question related to my own loan, okay, <clears throat> or if any business user asks, 
about all the loans he can answer quickly because he maintains only the loan data but if there is any question by the business executive which needs an integration of all these applications okay, there is no answer okay, so that is where data warehouse come into picture okay, as subject oriented okay, so even a customer has taken a loan account even a customer has taken a savings account even a customer has taken a credit card account okay, all these are customers for me as a business user Right. Whatever product they use, they are my customers. So I have to serve them better. Okay, so that is the customer subject area. So wherever the marketing people, okay, the marketing head, okay, he has to get all the customers' information in one place so that he can find out, okay, who all are the uh, who all are the customers of saving account, okay, and if the saving customer is already has a loan account or not. Okay, so he can get that from the customer database right customer subject area so if we have uh, loaded all the data here from the loans account from the credit cards account from the savings account okay and if i made some um, calculations okay so that i can know whether the customer is only for savings customer or the customer is also a customer for some other product in the bank or not okay so i can make out okay who all are the good saving customers and didn't have any loan accounts till now and I can approach them okay I can offer a lowest rate of interest and I can motivate them to take a loan so that I can sell one more product to the customers so that I can improve my business so okay so this is the way okay, how the business users would use this data warehousing data to improve their business okay so they will see the details of the current product okay how the assets are being done for this current product and if the transactions are okay for me okay they are satisfied then I will approach the customers okay instead of they approach me for the loan instead of okay I will, I will approach the customer and I will motivate them so that they will take a loan and they will repay it within time okay, so that my business will be good okay, in the same way all the products okay what all products I have Okay, I have loan product, credit card product, saving product here in this in this scenario, right? So all these products will be saved in a subject area called product, okay? And the details of products will also be stored in this particular tables. Okay, so product is a subject area, so some set of tables will become a subject area, so where they contain all the details of each and every product. Okay, so saving account. Okay, what what about saving account? Saving account should be having how much minimum balance? Okay, what is the rate of interest if they open a saving account? Okay, what are the terms and conditions? Okay, when it has uh, launched in the bank? The okay, such type of details all stored in the products. So if any other executive, okay, who wanted to see what are the products we have and what are the products a competitor has, okay, if any of the products are less for us, then can we introduce a new product in the market or not? So such type of decisions you can take very quickly. Okay, instead of going for all other applications, okay, segregating it, going to everyone, okay, finding out what the product we don't have, it is better if I have all this information at a single place so that I can myself analyze and I can find out okay, what is the product we don't have and what is the product they already have okay, so that I can launch it in the market very soon and I get my business improved. Okay, like that, okay, for data warehouse, all the data is segregated on the basis of subject not based on the functionality of the applications. So that is the major difference between the decision supporting systems, that is the data warehouse and the operational systems, okay, which are used to run the business, which are used to improve the business. Okay. So in the next slide, okay, we have the summary of whatever we have discussed in yesterday and today. Okay. So I will just go through some of the points. Okay, and I will give you a homework okay, to go through all other points and understand. If you don't understand, tomorrow you ask me these points, okay, whichever are you are not able to understand. Okay, so here if you see, OLTP is application oriented. Okay, that's what we have just seen. Right? It is a loan application, it is a credit card application, it is a savings application. So in OLTP, all models are designed based on the applications and functionalities. Okay, but in data warehouse, it is all based on subject the customer the entire customer is my subject area so he could be a loan customer he could be a credit card customer okay, any customer okay, would become under subject area okay, customers 
and it is used to run the business and it is used to analyze the business and to take the good decisions right and it is current up to date okay it means the data in OLTP is current to date means if I do a transaction it will be reflected at the same time in the backend databases also right if I do any withdrawal from my account that will be saved at the same time right it won't take much time it won't be reflected after two days or three days right? I expect that transaction to be noted down at the same time when I do the transaction so it is current up to date okay but it is summarized <coughs> right for data warehouse okay it is not mandatory that whatever operation you do here in OLTP it is reflected at the same time or not maybe okay if you do transaction at 12 o'clock okay uh, at 11 o'clock morning morning 11 o'clock you did a transaction for a bank okay, in OLTP so it is noted down at the same time in OLTP but it is not mandatory that at the same time the data warehouse also gets that same data okay it could be every day at 5 o'clock okay so every day at 5 o'clock this OLTP system would send all the transactions happened by all the customers okay, to the data warehouse and at 5 o'clock it will process the data and it will gets the summary of the information for the day okay so this is how the difference of the data based on the freshness of the data okay so in OLTP we'll have fresh data every time okay it is up to date but for data warehouse it depends on the frequency how OLTP sends data to the warehouse okay so how warehouse gets the data it is from OLTP only right so whatever transactions we do up to 5 o'clock today okay after 5 o'clock this OLTP system will send a feed with the summarized information to the warehouse so that it is processed and it is placed in the subject oriented model okay and it contains all detailed data okay, every day data okay, every second data every minute data it will capture but here it is a snapshot okay that's what we have discussed okay, every day at 5 o'clock okay it will send a summarized snapshot of the data okay, whatever the current status okay but today it will be sending that information okay so let's suppose okay i have done three operations three transactions today in my savings account okay one is withdrawal of 1000 rupees the other one is deposit of 2000 the other one is withdrawal of 3000 okay, so what happened totally I have withdrawal 4000 rupees and I have deposited 2000 rupees so what is the net transaction it is withdrawal of 2000 rupees right that is called snapshot okay so the net of the operations that is withdrawal of 2000 will be the snapshot and it will be given to the data warehouse okay and what is the account balance for the day okay after all the transaction for the day will be given to the data warehouse but each and every operation is stored in the detail in detail in OLTP systems okay so that is called snapshot data and the detailed data okay and it has isolated data and it has integrated data isolated data means the applications the loan applications okay the credit card application they, where they contain their own isolated data okay but in the warehouse okay if I have the customer subject area it may contain loans customer savings account customer so we can call this as an integrated data where it has relation between more than one applications okay it has a repetitive access okay, it has an ad hoc access okay repetitive access means we have a limited number of functionalities or limited number of tasks what we can do okay, through OLTP systems okay let's suppose if I do if I go for an ATM okay what all operations I can do I can do the operations which are defined at the ATM machine right so they will ask me to press this button for withdrawal plus second button for uh, account statement third button for something else so except those operations I cannot do anything else right so these are repetitive and predefined operations Okay, which are optimized and which are intended to provide service to the customers but here it is not the case it is an ad hoc access by the business users okay can we know which question will be asked at what time by the business user no right 
So business user may come at any point of time and he can ask any of the question, okay, which we may not expect by the time. Okay, let's suppose, okay, for an example, the CEO came to the data warehouse analyst, the BA analyst, and he was asking, okay, today is my birthday, so I wanted to give five percent incentive to all the employees. Right? It could happen. Right. So it is an ad hoc and it cannot be expected by the BA analyst at any point of time. Right? Otherwise, he may come on some other day, okay, it is my marriage anniversary, so I want to give a bonus of five thousand rupees for all the customers or all the employees also. Okay. Then he has to calculate it. Okay, how much cost it would be? Okay, how many number of customers we have? How many number of employees we have? Okay, so if we give five thousand rupees for each one of the associate or each one of the stakeholder, what would be the expense? Okay, so that I have to calculate and I have to give a rough figure to the business user so that he can decide on it. Right? So such type of ad hoc questions can come here. But in the OLTP, okay, it is all repetitive. You cannot expect more than what you are asked in the particular channel. Okay, if it is an online, okay, the predefined operations are mentioned at the left side panel. Okay, you can do only those operations. Okay, if it is ATM, okay, all these um, transactions are mentioned at the monitor. Okay, but in ad hoc access, okay, we can get any questions at any point of time by the business user. So we have to be ready with the uh, we have to be ready with the data so that we can answer those questions. Okay? And it is performance sensitive. Right? Because the customer will go to the teller and if you ask for money, if I take hours and hours, okay, he won't be waiting for me there. Okay. But here the business users are okay performance relaxed because their questions were very complex. So to answer their questions I need to access more and more data. Okay, so the performance may be relaxed here. So it is not that okay, at the same time okay, you have to answer that particular questions. I can take my own time, okay, maybe not maybe in two to three minutes, but I may take ten minutes or I may take fifteen minutes, but I can answer these questions because these are ad hoc questions, complex questions which involves more data to be analyzed. Right? So I have to take some time to answer such type of questions. Okay? And few records are accessed. Okay, there are large volumes of data to be accessed, right? Which we have discussed just now, and it has a read and update access. Okay, but here it has only the read because we have studied for data warehouse. It is all non-volatile data. That means we don't do any updates. We only read the data and we will understand the facts. Okay, what has happened? What is happening? What is going to be happened? So all analysis would be done. So it is all mostly read operations we do. Okay, but in OLTP we have read and update access. Okay, we can update the data as per the transactions. Okay, we can read the data okay, if, you, if they want any statements. Okay, and in OLTP there is no data redundancy. So they will design the model in such a way that okay, they don't have repeated data. Redundancy is nothing but repetition. Okay, redundancy is repetition. So there is no repetition of the data. So they will design the model in OLTP. Okay, that is called third normal form. Okay, third normal form okay, where they ensure that there is no redundancy of the data. Okay, but if in data warehouse, we will have some redundancy of the data because we have to make all the information together. Okay, and the DB size is less compared to the data warehouse right generally we maintain historical data in data warehouse so we, which occupies more space but in OLTP okay we occupy less space because we are more concentrated on the current data or at least three months of data or six months of data only so we maintain some stipulated time of information in the OLTP systems okay but in warehouse Okay, we have to maintain the historical information of all the customers, all the transactions and all the subjects. So that database size is very much high compared to the OLTP systems. Okay? And the transactions throughput is the performance metric. Okay, how do we measure the performance of the OLTP systems? Through the throughput. What is the throughput? Throughput is nothing but the number of transactions that okay, can be performed in 
a particular period of time. Okay, so per hour it is capable of doing 100 transactions. Okay, so that is the performance metric for the OLTP system. Okay, so in hour, okay, 200 transactions are being done. Okay, so the performance is good. Okay, I want okay the performance to be increased for the OLTP system. Then what I have to do? I have to tune my system such that okay in one hour it has to perform 300 transactions. Okay, so like that the performance metric for measuring the performance of the OLTP system is nothing but the throughput transaction throughput. Okay, but here it is query throughput is the performance metric. Okay, how fast a single query is being answered. Okay, is the throughput of the query. That means what type of queries okay, we can answer. Okay, if, if anyone asks an ad hoc question, is Dataware is able to answer that question or not? Okay, that is query throughput. So some this type of queries cannot be answered by the data warehouse. These type of questions only can be answered by data warehouse. Okay, if we segregate this, okay, so here I have 100 questions and if it is able to answer only 50% of it, then the performance of the data warehouse is 50% only. So I have to tune my data warehouse, okay, I have to model it, I have to capture some more data so that it can answer some more types of questions. Okay, so the query throughput will be the performance metric for the warehouse. Okay. And the users are more for OLTP because all the customers will use the systems, all the employees will use the system, okay. all the analysts will be using the system. So hundreds to thousands of users okay, in a mid segment of our nation I am saying. Okay. But here in the warehouse compared to OLTP the number of users will be less because who are the users of warehouse? The high executive managers. Right, so the number of executive users would be less than the number of employees, obviously. Okay, so it is accessed by all the employees, but it is accessed by only the executive employees or executive users. Right, so the number of users are less, but the number of data processed is high. Okay, it is all not repeated operations; it is all ad hoc operations we have to answer through warehouse. Right, and finally, it is a clerical users. Okay, who all are users? The type of users, clerical users. But here it is knowledge users and the managers. Okay, who uses this data warehouse system are almost managers and the knowledge users. But all clerical users, okay, who is responsible for the loans application? Okay, that loans clerical um, operator. Okay, will use that loans application. Okay, but here it is not application oriented, it is a subject oriented, so the knowledge users are the managers, executive users only use this warehouses. Okay. So with this we have covered the data warehousing basics and the existing operating, I mean operational systems and the decision supporting system that is called data warehousing. Okay. So unmuted. Any questions anyone to hear? If in any of the points here. Muted. So are you clear with all the points here? So that you, you have to be in a position okay, to answer what is the difference of OLTP systems and the warehouse systems. Okay, the definition of the warehouse system, the definition of the operating operations system. Okay, what is the benefits we are going to get for the data warehouse okay, if I implement Okay. And what are the requirements of the business users? Yet to summarize whatever we have learned, the okay, OLTP systems are used to run the business and the data warehouse helps to optimize or improve the business. Okay. That is the basic functionality of the operation systems and the basic functionality of the warehousing systems. Okay. So if you are clear, I am I'm going ahead for the data warehouse architecture. So this is the typical data warehouse architecture. Okay. Let's see what are the different phases, different components, get different names and terminology used in the data warehousing 
architecture. Okay. So, if you find the left side, get the leftmost side, all these are called operational data sources. Okay. So, it could be on a standalone systems, okay, the OLTP systems, okay, because from where the data warehouse gets the data, the operation systems only. Those are called OLTP systems, right? Operational data sources and distributed data systems and external market data. So third party vendors. Okay. Sometimes we may have to buy some data from other third party vendors. Okay. To go through the customers. Okay. For uh, for best example, the telecommunication uh, domain. Okay. Sometimes the Airtel people or the IDA people or Vodafone. Okay, they will call us and they will ask us, okay, we have a best plan suits for you, can you convert it to our network? Okay, how they got our data? Because you may have filled your data in some malls, okay, some cine theaters, okay, in some other places you may have given your data, okay, they have collected your data and they sold your data to the network vendors. Okay, so they got the information about you and they were trying to call you and make you as a customer for their network. Okay, so we may have to purchase okay, some data from third party vendors who gather the information, the genuine information, okay, they have to pay for it. So we may have to use some external party vendors data and we may have to use some operational data sources which made internally okay, by the transactions of our customers and our employees. Okay, so all these systems okay, we can use to pull the data and loading into the data warehouse here. Okay, so here you can see a uh, triangle. Okay, so these are the operations we do on this operational data before we load into the data warehouse. Okay, what are the operations we do? Let me maximize. Okay. So here, these are the operations we do. Extraction, extract is nothing but we have to extract data from different sources. Okay, so this operational data could be on Oracle, and this information could be on SAP. Okay, and this information may be on mainframes. Right. So it may use different sources source systems, different databases, different applications to maintain the data. Okay, so we have to extract the data which is distributed across different regions, different databases, different softwares, okay, in different formats. Okay, so we have to extract it. So that is called the first phase of the data warehousing project that is called extraction. Okay, and we will extract the data and we will place it in a staging place okay, where the raw data of the source systems are placed and then we will do the standardization and cleansing process. Okay, what is the standardization? Standardization is nothing but okay, making all formats okay, in uniform way. That means we have seen an example yesterday, okay, the gender column. Okay, a simple example, the gender column where the operation system 1 has stored it as M and F to represent male and female. Okay, and the second operating system, okay, the uh, SAP system or the Oracle system, okay, it has used okay, nine and eight to represent male and female. Let's suppose. Okay, and the other system has used male and female, okay, the entire word to represent males and females. Okay, then when I extract the data from all these different sources. Okay, when I placed it in a temporary database called staging area, okay, so I cannot make it out. Yet who, if, if it is 9, is it a male in the system or not? If it is M, it is male in the system or not? Let's suppose if they use the same values but with a different notation. That means, okay, <clears throat> here they are used 0 and 1 for male and female. 0 is for male and 1 is for female. And in the second system also, they use 0 and 1, <clears throat> but they have used 1 for male and 0 for female. Okay, so it is a confusion again. right? So what we have to do is, we have to analyze the data here from the sources, okay, what is the notation they have used, and here we have to do some transformations. 
Okay, so we have to transform all the zeros as male, all the ones as female in the first system, and in the similar way, all the ones as males and all the zeros as females in the second system. So that I can get a uniform structure of the data, okay, which can be analyzed on the whole. Okay, so such type of standardizations we have to prepare when after we extract the raw data from the source systems. Okay, so we do <coughs> cleansing, we do standardization, okay, those all are come under transformations. Okay, and we do some business calculations also if required. Okay, because operation data source has the detailed data. Okay, and if the data warehouse analysis say we need only the summary of the data, so calculate okay, all the day, okay, single day operations into a single record and do an aggregation operation and pull the data into the data warehouse. Then what we have to do, we have to segregate all the operations for the particular customer per the day and we have to come up with a single record which gives his outstanding balance per the day. Right? Instead of going through all the operations, it is required for me what is the balance he has maintained for the day. Okay, then I have to calculate it. Right? Those type of calculations will also come under the transformations. Okay, so we will do extract from the systems and we will do cleansing, we will do standardizations okay, and we will do transformations okay, and then finally we will propagate or load the data to the data warehouse. Okay, so we will extract the data, we will transform it, we will finally load the data into the data warehouse. So that is called ETL, extract, transformation and loading. Okay, that is called the operation ETL. Okay, and there are several tools available in the market to do this ETL operation. Okay, when I say Informatica, what is it? It is an ETL tool. What is an ETL tool? which is used to extract the data, to transform the data and to load the data into the warehouse. Right? And when I say data stage, what is data stage? That is also an ETL tool which is helpful for me to extract data from different operational sources to transform it and to finally load into the data warehouse. So <clears throat> we have several ETL tools like Ebinsho, Informatica, Data Stage, okay? Uh, you name it, there are so many other tools. Now Oracle has come up with their own tool, Oracle Data Integrator. Okay, so we can use any of the tool here okay, to extract, transform and load the data. Okay. <clears throat> and what is Data Warehouse finally? Data Warehouse is nothing but an RDBMS. Right? A database which holds the data okay, which, which was transformed by this process. Here in the operation systems, all these are maybe RDBMSs or all the uh, the civil operators. Okay, <coughs> the uh, what we call EP, ERPs, ERPs. Okay, they may be ERPs, they may be databases. Okay, which holds the data. Okay, and then when we extract the data and we transform the data again, we have to store it in some other database. But it is a larger database which contains an integrated data, the historical information and the information from all the regions and information from all the operational sources. Okay, so it is a larger database okay, which holds and which accommodates more data. Right? So it is also an RDBMS. Okay, what are the RDBMSs available in the market? Okay, we may use Oracle, we may use DB2, we may use SQL Server, we may use Teradata, okay? we may use Greenplum, okay, we can use Vertica, Okay, so all these are the databases. We can use Sybase. Okay. So any one of the database can be used in the place of data warehouse and we can develop our data warehouse. Okay. So we have seen the features and the extra benefits we get when we use Teradata as the data warehouse in our Teradata demo. Right. So here it is preferred to use a database which is having a parallel architecture and to can process data very fast in parallel. Okay, so where Teradata has that feature and it has already proven. So our Teradata will come here at the data warehouse. Okay, and then once we get the data into the data warehouse, okay, we have the business users using this information 
through different reporting tools. Okay. So what are the reporting tools available in the market? Again, okay. we have Cognos as a reporting tool which connects to the data warehouses and can report it. Okay. And it is not limited. Okay. I am not saying only to the data warehouse it can connect. Okay. Sometimes Cognos can be directly connected to operation systems and can generate the reports. Okay. It also can happen. So the basic requirement is it should be a database so that it can connect to the database and can report it. Either it may be a source system or maybe a data warehouse. It can connect. Okay. So we have Cognos as a reporting tool. We have Actuate as a reporting tool. We have Business Objects as a reporting tool okay, which can connect to any of the databases or the data warehouses and can create the reports so that the reports can be analyzed by the business users and can take proper decision. Okay, so this is the entire cycle of the data warehousing architecture. Okay, and here you see data marts. Okay, the data marts are nothing but okay, the sub parts are a single subject oriented data warehouses okay, which are extracting data from data warehouse. <coughs> Okay. Let's suppose in data warehouse I have all the information of customers, I have all the information of employees, I have all the information of vendors, everything. Okay. So every user is hitting the data warehouse to get their answers. So the HR, info, the HR executive will hit the data warehouse to get his employee related information and employee related questions. Okay. And the marketing head will hit the data warehouse for customer related information. Okay. And the <coughs> details of the products and all right but if every user at the same time hitting the data warehouse okay and across the globe right if i maintain a data warehouse for a multinational company okay that data warehouse will be used by across all the countries executives for their analysis purpose so there will be so many users okay who will be hitting the data warehouse at the same time Okay, so sometimes the performance of data warehouse may be degraded. Okay, so if we analyze and if we found some other some particular subject area is using this data warehouse for a long period and for very much frequency of the data, okay, then we can create a sub data warehouse for that subject area and give it to them dedicatedly so that they can access only this particular data mart. Okay, so it is a Subpart of the data warehouse, okay, which contains a single subject-oriented data. The okay, data warehouse in data warehouse will have all the subject areas information. Okay, so if the performance is degraded, then we can divide the single subject-oriented data into a special database, and we can give access to those particular department, and we can ask them to access the data from here. So these are called the data marts. Okay, the sub part of the data warehouse of a single subject area are called data mods. Okay, and here from data warehouse you can load OLAP engine. The okay, OLAP engine means online analytical processing servers, okay, which is nothing but okay, <coughs> the engines which are internally used by these reporting tools. Okay, the Cognos, Business Object, or Actuate, okay, all these reporting tools. The Hyperion, all the reporting tools have their OLAP engines within it, okay, which can be loaded and it can be directly served to the customers. Okay, and we have a data warehouse administrator here, okay, who will monitor the accesses for each and every user to all the system, and he can control it. Okay, how he can control it? Okay, let's suppose if I'm developer, okay, he will give me the read access on the data warehouse. Right, because I have to extract the data from different sources and I have to transform it and I have to load it. So as an ETL developer, I need write access on the data warehouse. Okay, but if a business user is there, okay, the business user would use a reporting tool to connect to the data warehouse and it will and he will access the tables. So what access he requires is only the read access. Right? So he will monitor the role of the person who is accessing the data warehouse and he will provide the required accesses to the particular user so that 
it would be in sync. <clears throat> okay, so if we give unnecessary access to anyone else, okay, he may do anything unknowingly and it may corrupt the data warehouse. So the controlling of the accesses on each and every phase to each and every user is also essential to control. Okay, so to control all these things, we have a data warehouse administrator in place. Okay, we can call them as database administrators also. Okay, so we have data mining tools. Okay, it is not very much not used in data mining, but OLAP, okay, the online analytical processing, is majorly used in the market for the decision support system and online analytical processing. <clears throat> so this is called typical data warehouse architecture where we have sources, where we have ETL tools to extract, transform and load the data into the data warehouse. We have different RDBMSs to maintain data warehouse like Sybase, Oracle, DB2, SQL Server, Teradata, Greenplum, Vertica, okay, all could be used as data warehouse database and then we can use any of the reporting tools like Cognos, Business Objects, Actuate. Okay, so now where we placed, okay, as a Teradata learner, okay, we have placed here at this place. Okay, extraction and loading, okay, extraction, transformation and loading into the data warehouses and sometimes maybe into the data mods also. Okay, so this is where we are placed right now okay, for this course related. So we are the ETL developers of Teradata. So when the data warehouse is Teradata, we have our Teradata ETL tools and we'll extract the data from different sources, transform it, we we'll load into the Teradata database. Okay. So it is another mode of representing the same information. Okay. We'll have relational databases, the source systems, ERP systems and all. We'll extract the data, cleanse the data, transform the data and we finally load into the data warehouse engines. Okay. And then we have the analysis process. So that is connecting to the reporting tools and report the data in form of charts, dashboards, okay, graphs, so that the business can be analyzed and the business growth can be shown on the paper. Okay, and and each and every system we have to gather the metadata. Okay, what is metadata? Metadata is nothing but data about data. Okay, the data which describes what is the data in the warehouse. Okay, so we have extraction cleansing jobs. So we have to maintain okay, what all jobs will use what data okay, for their transformation processes. Okay, let's suppose I have written a Unix job. Otherwise I have written a mainframe JCL job. Otherwise I have written a Informatica code. Okay, Informatica code which was generated and which was executed again on Unix. Okay, so let's suppose, so we have several jobs or stream of jobs okay, which will be run one by one in the schedulers. Okay, so we have to have all that particular information in the metadata. Okay, and about data warehouse, what are the number of databases we have, what are the number of tables, what are the columns, okay, what are the data types, what are the constraints we have on the columns. Okay, all such information is maintained in the metadata repository. Okay, and then again coming to the reporting side, okay, what all reports are accessing this particular column? Okay, what are reports are accessing this particular database? Because all this information is stored in the metadata. So it is all information about the data. Okay, what all jobs are loading which tables? What all jobs are mapped to which columns? Okay, and what all reports are accessing this particular column? So all this information is used in metadata, okay, loaded and stored in metadata. When we use this metadata, okay, we use this metadata okay, whenever we have a change came into the data warehouse. Let's suppose, okay, after three years, I built this data warehouse, one change came. What is the change? Okay, the particular source system has removed one of the existing columns. Okay, so they have removed one of the existing columns. So earlier there were 50 columns. Now they are sending only 49 columns. Okay, they have taken a decision to decommission one of the column. Okay, then when we pull the extraction, okay, the job will look for the column which was not there. Right? So 
what happens if I fire a query without a non-existence column in the query? It would fail with this syntax error, right? So this column is not defined. Okay, it will throw a message, error message, and it will fail. Okay, so the job would fail while extracting. Okay, and if the job fails, the data warehouse is not being loaded, and the reports cannot represent the new data. Right? So it was a gap again. <coughs> it was a gap where I cannot extract the data because of this non-existence of the column. I cannot refresh the warehouse with the new information. So the reports were showing the old information only. So if it happens for months and months, then my reports will be stale. So all the reports will show the bad data. That means old data only. Okay, so, so whenever a enhancements, okay, enhancements means the changes. The changes comes into the warehouse. Okay, we have to be intimated so that we have to do an impact analysis. Okay, what happens if one of the source system removed his its uh, existing column? Okay, so we have to make the corresponding changes in our extraction jobs, and we have to make the corresponding changes in the data warehouse so that the corresponding columns also to be removed from the data warehouse, right? And then we have to see what all reports act in that particular column, and we have to make amendments in that particular report so that it won't access that particular column and it, it, it also should not fail. The report also should not fail. Right? So whenever they corresponding change in the source system, we have to do an impact analysis. Okay, we have to see okay, at what parts the job is having possibility of failure or possibility have possibility of having a blank reporting. Okay, all these things we have to analyze okay, by seeing the code. Okay, so how we can find okay, which column is being accessed by which job and which column is being loaded into the which table of the data warehouse and which column is being accessed by the reports. Okay, so all this information we can get it from the metadata. Okay, so if you give uh, the source system column here in the metadata tools, it will give you what all are the jobs accessing this column and what all are the reports okay, are used okay, for this particular data items. Then you will go to those particular jobs and make the changes and then install it again. Okay, by the time they install their changes here, we also be ready with our installations okay, so that nothing will fail by the date. Okay, so that is what the enhancements are. Okay, whenever there is a change in the source systems, okay, we have to make our changes in the extraction process, cleansing process, loading process, and we have to make the corresponding database changes in the warehouse and we have to analyze it. Okay, we have to analyze the reports which are accessing it and finally in the reports also we have to remove such type of columns. Okay, so this is how we we'll use metadata okay, to process or to analyze the impact of the changes made by the source system or made by the reports. Okay, so we will continue tomorrow at the same time, okay, I will uh, walk you through the dimensional modeling tomorrow, and we will see okay, what are the dimensions and what are the facts, okay, or what is the relation between them. So, any questions till today? Unmuted. No, sir. Okay, it's clear. Good. Okay, so yeah. we'll meet tomorrow at the same time. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs>